Hi friends, so I want to talk to you objectively about tax cuts and deductions and a few other things and please feel free to add your comments below after you watch the whole video. If you've got something to add, I'd love to hear about it. I'm a pretty open individual. But tax cuts do not incentivize economic growth and they do not incentivize companies to create more jobs. Deductions do. Deductions incentivize economic growth and people to create more jobs. So if somebody gets a tax cut, they can save all their money, they can claim their income, and there's no tax consequence for it because that's literally what a tax cut is. A deduction, if businesses utilize deductions because that's all available instead of tax cuts, they don't get tax cuts, they just have deductions available for them, like they already do have deductions available for them, then now the incentive is, well, I got to make some business investments. And maybe some of that could be capital. And maybe some of it could be jobs and maybe high paying jobs instead of low paying jobs. It's those investments that literally captures the deductions so that businesses can reduce their taxes. Now, if all you have is a job and not a business, then no matter what, the tax plan is going to rip you off anyway. So when they talk about tax cuts and taxes and brackets and politics and in the media, they're talking about people with a job. So right off the bat, it's really important you know that if you're not going to start a business, then the tax code, no matter what they do with it, is designed to rip you off anyway because you're not doing anything else to stimulate the economy. All you have is a job. You're not creating houses. You're not developing business. You're not providing commodities like food, energy, water, whatever. So the only way that you can contribute to economic growth other than the labor that you do is through taxes. So you're always going to be ripped off by taxes if all you have is a job. But in terms of everyone's always talking about tax cuts, tax cuts uh, free up money so they can invest more and create more jobs. It's important. It's also important you understand that that is not true. They are lying to you because they're paid to lie to you by their donors. So... Think about it. A company makes a billion dollars or a million dollars, whatever the price tag is, and the government says, well, you get to uh, claim more of your income. You get to keep more of it, and there's not going to be a tax consequence for you. We're just going to give you good faith that you're going to reinvest it back into the economy so that workers can benefit from it. No, there's literally no tax incentive for it. They get to keep it. There's no consequence for it. The only way you can incentivize that is to do what we did in the 1950s and 60s when America really was great, economically speaking. Back then, we had a tax rate of claimed income as high as 93%. Now, it's in the upper 30 percentile, usually bounces between like 36 and 39%, depending on who the president is. But that's an enormous cut. And ever since we've been cutting it like that, the income gap has grown and workers have been screwed. In the 1950s, 60s, and even into the 70s and maybe a little bit of the 80s, a typical family, there could just be one breadwinner and that was enough to live comfortably. The spouse could t stay home, take care of the kids, and they could still put money away and go on family vacations and so forth. Nowadays, after all these massive tax cuts and the incentive for them to keep their money because there's no consequence for keeping their money when they make millions and billions, now the average family, you know, the mom and dad both have to work and they still can't make ends meet. So taxpayers have to make up that difference by different subsidies like welfare or food stamps to fill in that gap between what they actually make and what it costs to live. That's what tax cuts has done for this country. It's made America poor and, um, and put us in a place of financial disparity, which has a domino effect over every aspect of our lives. So the way to return to making America great for everyone again, number one, first and foremost, you have to decide you're going to develop a business of some kind. And you can ask me about that. I've been doing that for over 10 years. Um, but if you're not going to do that, then the tax code is going to screw you either way, but at least it could screw you less and maybe in a way that's more fair and has the same standard that's applied to everybody. Now, even though I'm dead set against having a job for me, I don't want to play in that nonsense, but I respect people's decisions to, yeah, if you want to have a job, that's cool. It should be fair and it should be the same standard that's applied to you that's applied to the political donor class. Because here's also what's going on in our system of legalized bribery. So why don't our politicians represent you? 
you know they don't represent you, right? Okay, here's why. Because they look at what you've donated to their campaigns. It's nothing or it's peanuts. Who cares? And then they look at their political donor friends who've donated millions to them. They're looking at them going, yeah, I'm going to play with those guys. You know, those peasants can just fuck off. So they're not going to represent you. You cannot compete. Do you have millions of dollars you can donate in, in the system of legalized bribery that we have that would be illegal and like doctors and lawyers, they go to jail for, but it's totally legit and part of our system in uh, uh, politics? Can you compete with millions of dollars? No, you can't. I can't. And someday I hope to have that option to compete. But, um, but even when I do... If I have millions and billions of dollars to buy politicians, I still wouldn't do it because I really like my country and I'm a principled guy and I want the same standard applied to me that's applied to everybody. But right now, the donor class and the politicians, they love socialism. They say they're capitalists, but they're not. But that's only for their losses. They socialize the losses of their friends to the tune of billions of dollars. If you add it all up over time, it's in the trillions of dollars easily. And you get nothing. You suffer a loss. Tough luck. Tough luck. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. If only they had to play in that same game that we have to. They're not capitalists. They're communists and they're socialists. Now, if they make a profit, which they are making record profits, which they are not trickling down to you, by the way. So record profits in the big business in the political donor class of legalized bribery. Record profits. Do they have to pay any taxes? No not a red penny. You make far less than they do if you're making anything at all. And if you don't pay taxes on it, you're going to jail. Another double standard. So I wish the same standard applied to everybody, but it's important that you know these things and that you know what tax cuts really are and the consequences of what they've really created and still are creating. And it's important you know what really does make an economy great for everyone again. It's you raise taxes big time on the biggest income earners because it incentivizes investments which creates those deductions to keep their taxes low. In the 50s and 60s when the taxes were as high as 93% for the largest income claimers, nobody really claimed that kind of income so nobody had to pay it because they did what they were incentivized to do. They reinvested that money. People had jobs, high paying jobs. People benefited, everybody benefited from that. That's why America was great back then economically. And it was the largest middle class in the history of the entire world. Obviously, what we were doing with our tax policy was working. And we've reversed course since then. So we got reverse results since then. It is so simple conceptually. And the media does not call out that scandal at all. They don't even talk about it because they're bought and paid for and owned many times by the same multinational corporations that bought and own our politics. So those three things, the multinational corporations that bribe politics are the same ones that uh, own the media companies. So you got our politicians, corporate-owned media, and the multinational corporations that bribe our politics. Those, those three things. So what do we do about it to solve this problem? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, go to Open Secrets. You can Google it. It's about money and politics. You can track every politician, every legalized bribery that's made. It's trackable there. You can see who's on the take, who's representing who, because they ain't representing you. And we can stop voting for these knuckle draggers, these clowns, these sellouts, these pathetic sellouts that say one thing while they're lying to you. We have to vote them out of office. There's a midterm. There's always another election coming up. Midterms, you know, the four-year cycles, the two-year cycles, state, local, the whole thing. And we, you need to become aware of who's on the take. Because if you're voting for somebody who's taking that legalized big donor bribery money from, you know, private health insurance companies, from Wall Street, from the military industrial complex, from private weapons contractors from pharmaceutical companies, you know, whoever it is, big oil, big whatever. If you're voting for somebody who's taking bribery money from those places, you cannot keep, uh, you cannot compete with them because you're not donating millions of dollars like they are. So why would you vote for them? You're voting for somebody who is not going to represent you and it's printed out on paper, so to speak, or on a website if you go and look at, you know, check it out, Open Secrets About Money and Politics. It tracks all of it. So look for the candidates who are principled, who are not taking that big money 
uh, donations who are going to represent you. And even if you have a disagreement with somebody who is principled, at least it can be a principled disagreement versus an unprincipled one. I'd rather have a principled disagreement than a un... I can talk. I'd rather have a principled disagreement with a politician than an unprincipled agreement with a politician. Any day of the week, I would. We have to get all the private money out of politics, and it starts with people like you and I doing it. Now, here's the hope for the future. The What's happening right now? In the Right now, it's uh, January 2018, depending on when this is seen. Years into the future, who knows? But in the past one year, we went from one person, one person in our national political arena who's uncorrupted by big money in politics. Just one. Now we have over 50. In the course of one year, we went from one to over 50 people who are now running for various seats in the House of Representatives, the Senate. You know what I'm saying? That is a trend of all trends. Going from one... Well, the one... The one he's a, a senator, so he's already in, but now... We have over 50 people in the course of one year, Fifty over 50. Last I looked, it was 51. It could be more now. Uncorrupted people challenging people that are currently in office who are corrupt by big money donors. So if that doesn't give you hope, nothing will because that is the king of all trends. It's one thing if something has a few added, a few added. This is one to over 50 in the course of a year. So... We need to, this is the time where we can actually do something. So you need to become aware of who's taking big money and who isn't. And start voting for people who isn't taking money and being corrupt. You have to. If not now, then there is no good time for it. So now is really the time to take that kind of action. Before, you know, this wasn't happening. You only had choices of people that were part of the establishment, people that were corrupt, people that were being corrupted and taking all the legal bribery money that they could take. So we really didn't have a choice. It was either corruption A or corruption B or corruption C. Now we have a choice between corruption or not corrupted. So you have to get out there, share this video, talk about it with your friends, and you don't have to get issue specific just because there's a lot of division on issues, and that's fine. But I want to have those discussions too after we get the money out of politics. So for now, in my opinion, the biggest thing the number one biggest deal by far and away is to get the money out of politics. So open secrets and start identifying and following and voting for people that are uncorrupted and outright, out loud, openly and honestly rejecting all big money donor in their, in their politics. And right now we have the trend of all trends trending in that direction. And so we have to set that trajectory for the future and make it a reality so that we eventually get a representative democracy. Wouldn't that be nice? Instead of working in a system that is slanted against you so that the people who are donating millions that you cannot compete with so that they are no longer slanting the system against you for their gain at your loss. Wouldn't it be great if it were just a level playing, playing field and we had one standard instead of one standard for them and another for you? Well, this is our chance. So now there's no excuse. There's no reason to sit on the side saying, oh, it'll never happen. Pie in the sky. No. I'm being pragmatic. I'm not being pie in the sky. Going from one to over 50 uncorrupt people going for office. One of them already in. In the course of one year. Oh my God. We're, this The stage is setting for a bloodbath for every corporate politician that's in politics right now. We can wipe them out. This is our time now to finally take action and vote. Because now, for the first time ever, we have a choice between corrupted or uncorrupted rather than corrupted versus corrupted. I mean, come on. It's no longer a choice of a lesser of two evils. It's like good versus evil now. So let's go with the good, the uncorrupted and get out there, spread the word and let's make this happen. There's, there's really no reason, no excuse not to anymore. Okay. I hope I made my point. <sighs> and if you want to see more of what I'm about, TomBurkenmeyer.com. Spell just like it is here on social media. Take out the space, all our case, TomBurkenmeyer.com. And please feel free to share your comments below about getting all this corruption out of politics so that we have a government that represents us. Okay? Because I love having principled agreements and principled disagreements with people. They just got to be principled. 
And to do that, we got to get all the money out. So bye for now. See you later. Mwah.